I would like to welcome uh, our next speaker, Dr. Eric Revenu. Dr. Uh, Eric is emergency physician toxicologist, International Council for French National Society of Emergency Medicine, Pre-Hospital and Disaster Medicine Section of European Society of Emergency Medicine, Chair of Website of the European Society of Emergency Medicine, Faculty Member of the International Emergency Department Leadership Institute, sponsored by the Emergency Department at Brigham and Women Hospital uh, in the Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, Dr. Eric will talk about uh, sepsis therapy. What should I change? Just would like to welcome Dr. Eric. Thank you for. Thank you for this uh, very kind introduction. If I may, I uh, can change uh, the topic. It's sepsi therapy, and we make it a funny way to speak about the uh, new way of uh, sepsis. So as you've seen, uh, I have to, to find something funny about uh, the trilogy I could uh, find for Joe's. It could be uh, Indiana Jones, but I found uh, Star Wars. So like the Star Wars way, if you will. Okay. So, as you know, for many years, and we know that sepsis is the leading cause of death in everywhere in the world, and we spend a lot of money, uh, more than 20 billions of dollars, to, and the hospital cost uh, in the, in the last, last years. It's a huge problem that we have in our emergency department in, in uh, intensive care units, and as you see on the slide, the number of patients coming to the ED is not easy to make the diagnosis of sepsis, and uh, it's a septic shock. And many doctors, like we are in the emergency department, if the hard part of the job is when do we have to treat the patient very early, when do we have to give some antibiotics, when do we have to call the intensivist, because it's not easy. And we'll show that maybe the definition are quite not helpful for us. So as you see in the slide, so just 13% uh, of patients are, are in the ICU and they have a high... Uh, um, uh, ratio of the mortality in the, in, the, in the intensive care unit. So that's uh, in this uh, pyramid that you have in Dubai. It could be hard to remember that it could be uh, one of the main problems. As we, we know, the, the key concept of sepsis, that uh, it's a primary care of infection, at, uh, and we have a lot of comorbidities in patients. We have a lot of elderly patients coming in sorry, in the emergency department, and they have a lot of uh, uh, comorbidities, sex rage are, are quite uh, not simple to treat. And what kind of uh, sepsis it is? Is it just an infection, a sepsis? Is it a shock? It's not easy to, to do that. And when we have, you, you look at this slide that a lot of you uh, knows that we use for many times more than 20 years, we have these uh, uh, sh slides with the uh, Sears, uh, inflammation uh, uh, systemic, sepsis, severe sepsis or septic shock. And we have some uh, uh, data about that, and we have a lot of uh, clinical and parameters to, to, to know what sepsis is. But this kind of uh, definition uh, is quite vintage, that we had it uh, 20 years ago. So. Take the example of this other slide. It's, uh, as you see, sepsis is not easy to find in emergency department. So let's take a few examples of the, um, this picture. Is that easy to recognize a sepsis here? Do you think it's a sears? Do you think you have to uh, do ask for lactate? Do you have to do, uh, ask for PCT? Do you, do you think we can give antibiotics in this kind of, of patient? Sometimes it's not easy like that. Sometimes more easy, like, like that, that one. But if I see this patient that we have in our emergency department, do we have to call the intensivist? Do we have uh, to give antibiotics first? And, uh, sh or should I wait? Because they say, wait before giving antibiotics. Okay, we wait. Maybe we don't call the intensivist. And if you wait too long, it's too late. Because sometimes it's too late when you call the, the intensivist and the patient is in the ICU and die. Uh, in the ICU. So the problem is, that's our job. We know that we have a lot of sepsis coming in the, in the front door. Let's take the example uh, in our patient floor in the ED. So let's take the example of the upper Palpatine, nice guy coming in your emergency department at the front door, and he had just a primary call. It's not quite, quite very simple that we have. And he waits in the emergency department, stay more longer, 
maybe it's more than bronchitis. It's, it's, why, it's well, well, not good that when he is in emergency room. And you were waiting for more, it uh, should be a pneumonia when you, you were. And if you were wait more and he, you don't have, make the good diagnosis, of course, it's, uh, it's the mess and the patient die in the ED. That's the main problem that we have. So many times the patient come in your emergency department, you don't know, you don't have a lot of parameters who can't say that the patient will die uh, and you, in, your, in your ICU. So the key concept of sepsis, as we know, it's uh, organ dysfunction with the infection. But we know that sepsis kills. By the way, I am the father. I'm sorry, I have to do that. I'm sorry. Stupid joke, but I have to do that. But um, I, the iceberg, the part of the iceberg is you don't know when the patient has a sepsis. So, uh, and that's the trilogy. And that's the trilogy because in the 1991, we had Rivers with the beautiful uh, work on the early goal th therapy, and they reduced the mortality with that, uh, with a very, very simple and very good way to, to treat sepsis. That was the first step, uh, it was the sepsis one. In 2001, that was the sepsis two, the second conference with experts about how to treat and make a definition of a, uh, with the task force. The problem is with the second definition, it was not clear if it was sepsis, severe sepsis, is it an infection? It was not qu qu quite very easy. I mean, for us, it's not easy. And the, the last part, that the part of the trilogy, that was uh, Star Wars 3, when the, they group of uh, very good intensivists who tried to, to make connection of what we speak about, about definition. So that's the task force uh, decide in, uh, in uh, 2014. They uh, had uh, 19 experts of intensive care unit, pneumologists, surgeons, and they work on uh, all the data that we have in our intensive care unit in the ED and looking for parameters and how working of the cohort of patients. So finding where are in this cohort of patients, where are the more CV patients in your emergency department. So they have a very good, very good, a huge work on the data for, for that kind of job and we're, we're seeing what kind of patient have to be in the ICU and some who have to be in the ED and to, to, to know what kind of parameters, what are the cutoff of the parameters and what are the conclusions they gave. First, there is no gold standard for definition of uh, sepsis. The first is the spe not specific illness that it is not easy. So it's our part of the job to say it's not easy to recognize because it's a lot of symptoms of patients coming in your ED. So, and there is a second point, there is no gold standard for diagnosis of sepsis in your emergency department. So the new definition is sepsis is a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host response to infection. That's the last definition they, they, they gave. And they remove the SIRS criteria had been removed because it can may be present or absent or even this kind of uh, uh, situation. So that's the first step of definition, removing the SIRS definition. The other thing is the septic shock. Septic shock is the subset of sepsis with underlying circulatory and cerebral metabolic abnormalities and uh, uh, with, who can increase mortality, particularly with the fluid resuscitation. If you have to give vasopressure for, to maintain blood pressure under 65 or, and, sorry, not or, and lactate more higher than two, you are in a septic shock. That two simple definition that they gave. They remove uh, CV sepsis and septicemia because it was not clear to, to help your, the emergency the, the, the physician. So, to summarize, it's we reduce uh, cis and severe sepsis in the definition, and that's the, the new concept of working. There are no other classification that we have to use, because one of the other problems they had is to know what kind of definition and what kind of classification. It was not easy to do, and they, what the proposal they give is uh, uh, 
uh, using the international classification of disease with kind of code for that. And as you see uh, now, the clinical criteria in uh, last year, it was documentation for sepsis and septic shock with using vasopressor and lactate. Which code to, to use? It's not easy to have a score because we, we know that uh, in intensive care unit they have a lot of scores and we don't know the, the score. So many score, one of them is this CIS criteria, maybe you use it, but the, the, the problem is you have to have the respiratory rate, what blood said, and the heart rate, temperature, etc. That's the, the you, I don't know if many of you are using that one. And this one is the SOFA. SOFA is very good, it's excellent uh, score, but you need to have the gas, blood gas, uh, coma scale, uh, arterial pressure, and you have to see if you use uh, vessel pressure or not. It's not so easy also. And you have the lots, maybe some of you are using the lots, but you see that you need to have a lot of uh, blood sample for that. A very easy way to, to change for us as an emergency physician is a quick so far is that one. You just have clinical uh, parameters like respiratory rates, coma, Glasgow scale, and blood pressure. Because the experts said it's better to, to use uh, your coma, Glasgow scale under 15, as the, they say, alternate mention. When you have this kind of patient very quickly in your uh, emergency department, you know that the patient is maybe, will be in a, in a sepsis. So this kind of uh, uh, tool are very useful now and we can use that. And thanks for the expert to s simplify the, the process for, for us to use that. Here is the SOFA score, as you see, from zero to four, and you have uh, the, the gas, platelets, uh, bilirubin, and uh, some uh, other tests and when you have a SOFA score more than two, the mortality will rise higher than 10% for the patient coming in the emergency department. So that's a very good way to, 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 to use it. The, the other screening tool is when you suspect an infection, that's a quick SOFA, you can use it. When you have a respiratory rate uh, more than 22, uh, when the patient have a coma Glasgow scale under that 15, or a blood pressure under that uh, uh, 100 with two criteria, you have a strongly uh, prediction of the uh, of our bad outcome for this patient. So, in the practical way, uh, as you see, sepsis is the life-threatening organ dysfunction with a sofa more higher than two or a quick sofa higher than two. Uh, also, uh, in uh, to summarize that, you can find it on the excellent paper of the Gemma. When a patient comes and you suspect an infection, you analyze the quick sofa. The quick sofa is higher than two. It is uh, maybe you have some evidence for organ dysfunction. You ask for the sofa, sofa higher than two, you are in a sepsis. And if you use, you need to use vasopressor and, uh, to maintain the blood pressure. And if your lactate level are higher than two, the patient is a septic shock. So you could ask, okay, what about lactate and uh, PCT? Is it good or, or not? One of the main things that uh, using lactate is lactate more than, higher than four. It's the severity of sepsis. And the mortality is uh, o o always 28% uh, if the lactates are higher than four and 5% if the lactates are under that 2.5. Two if you look for a clearance of lactate, if you reduce the clearance of lactate in the six first hours, it's a good prognosis. So lactate high, a very good importance in, in, your, in your emergency department. What about the PCT? PCT under the uh, 0 0.8 and the lactate mortality will rise. So it's a very good tool to, to use it with, with the, 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 the score. You can use also the lactate and the CRP because some of you, some of us are using CRP too and the mortality can rise with the use. So using PCT is a very good tool inside the emergency department uh, in, this, uh, in this way. Uh, please take care that PCT under the 0.0, you have no sepsis. So you are, 
it's uh, like the, the dimers, the young, the PCT is like the dimers. If they are negative, you have a very strong uh, position to say there's no sepsis. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, Professor uh, Jean-Louis Vincent from Belgium to uh, give me this, uh, this slide. It's to uh, summarize if the patient is stable and you use blood lactate, you give IV fluid, or you see if you need to give vasoactive A agent. The use of PCT is very useful for you if you need to give antibiotics. And to summarize, PCT and lactates, mortality will be higher as you have these parameters. It's the, 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 the same, the same uh, uh, schema from Schutz about how you, you give antibiotics or not with the use of, the, uh, of the PCT in the emergency department giving antibiotics if the PCT is higher than two, uh, 0 0.25. So there is some message that uh, we can learn for that. The new definition of, of sepsis and the septic shock. The cis, you can use it anyway, the cis, of course, but they remove it in this uh, definition. Severe sepsis are no longer a part of the classification for that and be careful of the blood pressure and lactate for the patient. The other thing is sepsis now, the definition is life-threatening organ dysfunction with a dilceraglin host response to infection and the septic shock is a subset of sepsis and as you, you, we, we talk about. The other thing is outside of the ICU, I mean inside the emergency department, use the quick sofa. It's a very useful way to have uh, a, a way to uh, recognize a patient in sepsis. Inside the ICU, so far is very good, uh, useful to predict the mortality of the patient inside the, the, the ICU. So maybe we'll have another uh, Star Wars with another aspect and uh, I hope that uh, maybe one day in two, three days we'll have another uh, update for the classification of the sepsis. Uh, thank you so much.